Hello there! Welcome back to another video. Today, we will talk about rendering. You often hear this term used a lot in the context of creating a visual piece of graphics with the aid of 3D models and assets. Although that's true, it is slightly different in the context of digital drawing, as it refers to the process of finalizing a piece of art to make it look more realistic and have more depth into it. And in this video, we're going to go through some tips that are going to show you just how you can achieve that. Let's hop into it. Create layering and depth. Creating the depth in your piece of art isn't something that can come in the end. To have a strong sense of 3D environment, you need to have a solid foundation. And yes, that means that your very first initial sketch needs to be well done. This, along with some stages in digital art, are fundamental stages that need to be fully well done before moving on to the next stage, because correcting anything later will be a bit harder. With that being said, you'll also need to plan your background beforehand, to place all the objects and set all the distances. A very known technique that helps you do that is splitting the whole piece into layers, in which every set of objects is an individual layer. Depending on the distance on how far they are from the viewer's eye, that will help you have more control over the whole background and how the size of each element is used to make the optical illusion of distance and depth. And speaking of depth, we can't simply ignore the power of perspective and its vast variety of rules. By having your perspective lines set up and your vanishing points predefined, you will find it a lot easier to create that sense of perspective in the drawing, because every line and shape you'll draw will have rules to follow. Rules you have established yourself, by the way. Along with what we call foreshortening, which is basically perspective rules smartly applied on any character you have in the drawing, or in a more general way, on the human anatomy. Learn more about lighting and color. We can't talk about rendering without talking about lighting or colors, can we? It's ridiculously empowering to learn more about lighting, as it almost feels like cheating for how fast your paintings are going to improve the moment you start paying more attention to your lighting. Starting from the basics, meaning that you'll have to define the light source, or well, sources in your drawing, that every shadow or highlight you'll be creating will be based on. Which takes us to talking about how you should be smartly creating shadows and highlights. As you graduate colors and lights, it is always better that you don't use completely black for dark areas or completely white for bright areas. Going to those two extremes should only be done when necessary. Instead, try shifting the color as you gradually go from bright to dark. Darker parts tend to have warmer colors and brighter parts tend to have cooler ones. And speaking of gradient and gradual shift of lighting, since you have your light sources, using them to make a smart transition helps, but what helps more is making the most important part of the drawing have the brightest colors, creating some sort of focal point to the eye and making the viewers look exactly where you want them to look. And finally, go easy on the highlights. We rarely ever see very hard highlights in real life, unless the object is oily or made of metal, and neither of those are just casually found in humans. So blend your highlights a bit more carefully and make them easier to the eye. Do that and you'll be surprised with the amount of realism your artwork is gonna have. Discover blending and brushwork techniques. Talking about lighting, shadows and gradient, these three have something in common and the thing that will give you a hard time if you don't know how to do it properly is blending techniques and brushwork. A lot of people seem to just hop into the software and use any default brush, or only check up the few variety of them that are already built in, and you guess it right, this can be very limiting, and we doubt that you want to be limited. For that, we highly suggest that you start discovering the designated brushes and the different uses for each of them, as there is almost a brush for literally anything. Cloud brushes, star brushes, birds, and even trees, you name it. But the trick with designated brushes is learning how to properly blend them, so it doesn't look like any pre-designed element that you brought into the painting, which obviously doesn't look so good. And for that, you will also have to discover all kinds of blending brushes. Whatever you're making, these brushes will help you blend it seamlessly and smoothly, going from one side to the other in a very subtle manner which will obviously give a more natural sensation. I mean, everyone wants that, right? And since we're talking about blending in the context of designated brushes, we can't forget its importance on both lighting and colors, for both highlights or shadows. You will one day or another need to blend and make a soft transition between the bright and the dark, the cool and the warm, and any other natural transition between two colors. 
Blending can be used in different ways. You can either create it simultaneously while coloring, or you can simply finish up your colors and lighting and then go back to blend them. It all depends on your personal preferences anyway. The overall goal that you want to achieve, however, is to make sure to go for the right brushes depending on what you're hoping to come up with at the end of the day. Spend some more time detailing and texturing. Details. Most people love small details and the complexity they bring to any artwork. And although some people might insist that simplicity is key, very rare are the cases where details make a digital drawing look bad. If anything, they make it look better. They say if a drawing looks bad, adding enough details will make it better. Nobody said that, we just made it up. But, but you get the point. Texturing your drawing, whether by using assets or manually create the texture, will not only add a sense of depth, but a subtle feeling of how that object feels. Walls, for example. You can easily make someone imagine if that wall is soft or harsh on their hand, just by using texture. Which brings us to talk about fabric and material. Yes, you got your clothes, wood, metal, fur, or even skin. All of those are materials you should pay attention to while making. One way to make it easier is that one advice we know and you're so tired of hearing, yes, use references. There is no way around it really, so why now? Because every time you draw something that has a new kind of material, you will really need to do some visual feeding to see how that material or fabric reacts to lighting and how it drifts through the wind and so on and so forth. This is the main reason why artists struggle with drawing clothes, despite trying again and again. Spend some more time focusing on these details and you will be fine, really. Use tools of precision and refinement. There is something you'd surely notice if you keep checking up paintings of famous experienced artists. There is no line art. Or it is almost seamless. Line art is one of the most hated stages for many artists. For one, it's hard, and for the other is the sketch always looks better and more detailed. Until you do this. But don't worry, you'll hardly need to do that anymore, or at least if you want your painting to look realistic and three-dimensional. Line art is mostly used to display cartoony or Japanese anime style in the painting. But when you're creating something more realistic, using the lasso tool is way more effective, as you can simply define your edges and then comfortably color around and apply your shadows and highlights. Using this trick will feel magical for the amount of differences you'll see. You would be surprised if you haven't heard this tip before, because it's a very common way to create 3D looking drawings. If you still want to use some lines, sure, no problem, you can do the following. You can keep the sketch and color based on it, then slowly remove parts of the sketch that feel wrong. An artist who cleverly shows that in his paintings is Sam from Sam Does Art. Or you can simply use line art with different colors. This will make it blend with its environment instead of having that one black line around screaming that this is a 2D drawing. There are really no shortcuts into learning how to create stunning realistic digital drawings. You learn the tips, but you'll take some time getting the hang of each and every one of them. And for that, we encourage you to never stop trying. And each time you come up with something you didn't like, the next time you try again, it'll be better. That was all for this video, and see you in the next one.